once the biodiversity is sustained, then humanity is also sustained with the kind of integrated farming. When we are sustained, then the biodiversity is also mm -hmm. sustained. Imagine Earth as a vibrant forest, where majestic trees stretch out towards the sun. Colorful birds sing their sweet songs. Shy creatures peek from hidden burrows, and mushrooms push through the fertile soil. This diverse and rich tapestry of living things is known as biodiversity which is the foundation of a healthy planet. Each creature, from the mightiest predator to a tiny little bee, plays a vital role in our ecosystem. But this forest faces a growing threat. Human actions are clearing away habitats, disrupting delicate relationships and pushing countless species towards extinction. This documentary explores the inspiring story of a community that took a stand for nature. We'll see how local knowledge and traditional practices combine with scientific expertise to create innovative solutions. Join us as we discover how community-based conservation gives hope for a flourishing future. Welcome to Longling. Nestled in Nagaland, India, this district is identified as a biodiversity hotspot with its rich tropical rainforest that supports diverse flora and fauna. It is one of the few places in India where virgin forests are still found. But beyond its beautiful landscapes and vibrant greenery lies a deeper narrative, a story woven by the indigenous tribal communities. Longling takes center stage today for another reason, the annual spectacle of Amur falcons grazing its skies in October and November. The Amur falcon, a small bird of prey, undertakes one of the world's most remarkable migrations. These birds breed across Eastern Asia from Siberia to China and then travel to the wintering grounds in southern Africa. One of the routes they can be found taking is across the Himalayas through northeastern India. The spectacle these birds create is genuinely breathtaking in both distance and numbers. However, amidst this beauty lies long unseen challenges. Threats from the past such as hunting and zoom cultivation still cast a shadow over these birds. But there is hope nurtured by the collective efforts of the local community. Mr. Nukluform, the founder of the Lamsa Chenlok Society, won the prestigious Whitley Bioconservation Award in 2021 for initiating the Biodiversity Peace Corridor. His passion for conservation and sustainable use of natural resources echoes through the valleys of Nagaland. You heard about this uh, Amur falcon which comes from Mongolia and flies down to South Africa. But before they go to South Africa, they roost here for about uh, five weeks. Uh, <clears throat> there are different uh, roosting sites in Northeast, especially in Mekalaya, in Assam, in Manipur, and so also in Nagaland, which started actually. And even in Nagaland, there are many different uh, sites where the Amur falcon roost. In our district, there are you know uh, two, three places where siding is done. Mm -hmm. uh, but then one very large uh, roosting site is this place that you see there, the, yes. that hilltop area plane coming down. So this is the major roosting site. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, for almost like 12 years, the birds have been roosting there. And then uh, what we decided was since the falcon started roosting there, uh, we decided not to touch the river, not to disturb the river. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, earlier people would come and do jhum cultivation here. Mm. So we requested the community, instead of doing the jhum cultivation here, because the Amurs are roosting, 
can we shift to the other locations? And the community was willing to do that. Mm. So on this other side, the jhum cultivation is taking uh, place now. Okay. So we are not actually disturbing the amurs because they are roosting there. Yeah. Uh, but what is happening is now with the increase of population, mm. they are gradually expanding the roosting site. Okay. So from last year, we have seen that the amurs are going there. Um, uh, you see this hill yeah. So we have around five different patches. Yeah. So one patch is like a one year jhum for around 300 families. So five patches of that large forest we have already conserved. Innovative approaches such as integrated farming and social integration initiated by Mr. Nuklu Farm through the Lamsa Chenlok Society offer promising avenues for mitigating human wildlife conflict and fostering sustainable use of natural resources. The whole philosophy of starting this uh, innovative integrated farming, we also call it innovative, integrated, mm -hmm. sustainable, scientific land use. Mm -hmm. So we call it ISLORA, okay. or could also be in short form SLORA. So what we are doing here is to shift, not to completely shift from Jum. Jum will always be there, but what we are saying is the quantum of forest that is being damaged can be reduced. Yes. And but then this will not be sustainable. And I know Joom is not sustainable mm. because I have tried. I also had my own Joom and even did a very uh, 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 systemic calculation of how much did I invest and how much did I, you know, mm. gain. So with all this, I realized that it's not very, you know, viable. Mm. It's not sustaining the farmers. So we have uh, started this innovative integrated farming. Mm. Uh, when we say integrated, it's not just one crop. Yeah. We're integrating many uh, different, different species crops. and different crops. Uh, but the good thing about this area is, if you are looking at the ownership, the land belongs to around five people. Mm -hmm. But what we have decided is, supposing a plot of land just below this mm -hmm. is uh, it's around uh, 10, 10 hectares, it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, whoever wants to use it, use it. Of course, I'm not giving you the land, but so long as you want to cultivate, you can use it. So we are integrating not just the crops, but we are integrating families and people. Mm. So along this, we have around six, 67 of us. Mm. So real owner will be only around five of us. Okay. But we are integrating around 67. So almost uh, 62 individuals, individual families have come together mm. to work together. Mm. So it's not just crop integration, but we are also integrating the social community people yeah. together. Yeah. So we work together. You know, social integration yeah. is taking place. So uh, this is something, uh, good thing happening. Uh, this is just uh, three, four years we have started mm -hmm. because of fund constraint. We are not able to actually um, uh, implement actually what we have initially designed. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's just the uh, agriculture crops, uh, uh, other rabbis and winter crops, uh, depending on the season. A conversation with an employee of the Lemsa Chenlok Society revealed a deep connection and passion for conservation. Usually the villagers also seem to celebrate mm -hmm. when there's coming of Amur Falcon. So uh, that's what I see, the positive vibes from the mm -hmm. community members. Yeah. Uh, and it gives a lot of inspiration to me mm -hmm. personally uh, to see them, you know, uh, working together in the holistic development for this biodiversity preservation. Yeah. The tribal head and the women of the foam tribe gathered underneath the protective canopy of the traditional Morong to discuss their participation in the Lamsa Chenlok Society's work. As custodians of tradition and change, they expressed excitement about the community's high spirits. So, we had the authority to tell the village communities that whether to cut fields in this particular forest area or mm -hmm. whether whether to shift the area for cultivation. And also, uh, since with our coming of this land, such a log, mm -hmm. uh, when people people have, they wanted, we wanted to preserve the forest. So when they came together, so he had the authority and he, when he shared this to the community people, mm -hmm. they have agreed and everyone has collaboratively supported and uh, came to a decision not to do hunting at all. The little uh, forest that they are preserving, they are able to get fresh air, and which is you know, spreading through the whole villages. Mm -hmm. And they believe that the forest that they have conserved um, 
and the air that that they are able to get is also spreading to the other parts of the world. Okay. So he says and encourages people to conserve more of the forest, more, and to you know conserve our environment. The Lamsa Chenlok Society not only demonstrated what not to do, but also guided the way forward by providing an alternative to hunting and zoom cultivation. The local knowledge and traditional practices of the tribal communities, combined with Mr. Form's scientific expertise amplified by the local church, played a vital role in shaping this conservation story of the Amur Falcons. Not just the Amur falcons, but then the other species can also have a uh, safe uh, heaven for them to sustain. So once the biodiversity is sustained, then humanity is also sustained with the kind of integrated farming. When we are sustained, then the biodiversity, the biodiversity is also mm -hmm. sustained. So that's the whole philosophy we have started. Documenting successful case studies like this can inform us of strategies and interventions that have worked globally. The conventional, top-down approach to conservation is now being replaced by a more inclusive and collaborative model. This shift reflects the growing recognition of humans' interconnectedness with the ecological systems. By moving beyond external, expert-driven solutions, community-based conservation empowers local communities to protect their land actively. By promoting a collaborative model, we perhaps could work towards a future where humans and wildlife coexist harmoniously, ensuring the well-being of both the local communities and the ecosystem at large. Many species of birds, like the beautiful Amur falcons, are threatened by us today. Can we amplify the voices of conservation and ensure a future where the tapestry of life flourishes and success stories like this become the norm? <laughs>